Hello farmers and welcome to the Kenyan farmer. Most chemicals list the insects that they are active against. The decision to use or not to use the chemical, the type of chemical to use, how and when to use it depends on what is the main problem. Let me start by saying that not all insects in the farm are enemies. There could also be some friends. I want you to accompany me to the field and identify common enemies and some friends, if we are lucky. This process of identifying pests and diseases in agriculture is commonly called scouting, a crucial step in integrated pest management. So, where do pests live? I can't see any. Well, at times I may note the damages, but that may be a little bit too late. Scouting as a skill can help you establish best early warning systems. Most pests hide themselves under the leaf and are often active at night, operating under the cover of darkness. I think they don't like sunlight, or maybe they are afraid of the birds. I don't know. Most people may assume that all is well in the garden, but an experienced farmer can spot pest activities from a distance, even if it's not obvious. I will first visit my watermelon seedlings in the nursery. Can you see something weird on that leaf? Like, why is it folded? Let's check under. Lo and behold, we have a winner, the aphid. And now take a look at this skooma. Don't they look nice? But wait a minute. What's with that plant? Those leaves don't look okay to me. So, what's hidden under the leaf? Ta-da! It's the aphids. I can't think of any vegetable that is not attacked by the aphids. And they don't have to be green in color. They can be black, white, or red. Aphids have a sharp mouth called a stylet. It's like what a mosquito uses to puncture your skin. They suck the plant's blood, called the sap, and just as mosquitoes transmit malaria, aphids are carriers of viral diseases to plants. Now, most insects undergo a process from egg, adding to larvae, then pupa, and finally to adult insects. The process is called complete metamorphosis. Aphids are quite weird. Since they don't necessarily follow this, they can directly give birth to baby aphids by just cloning themselves in a process called parthenogenesis and imagine the babies are born pregnant to start laying more babies in about 10 days or so this makes aphids super spreaders compared to other insects another weird fact is that aphids don't normally have wings but when they realize they have become overpopulated on a leaf now they can grow wings and fly to uncolonized areas. Very versatile insects. On this leaf, I'm lucky to find both wingless and ones with wings. Let me talk about these black ants that you often see around the aphids. Aphids have a symbiotic relationship with the ants. The ants will guard the aphid against the predators and in return, the aphids donate the sweet juice that they get from the plants. The ants have the habit of tapping on the aphids. And aphids produce this sweet juice called honeydew on their backside. Yuck! It's like the way you pay taxes to get police services or some insidious friends with benefit kind of relationship, organized crime. So next time you see a traffic of black ants on the stems of your fruit trees, Take time and investigate deeper the main problem. Now, let me talk about leaf miners. 
There are many species of insects that produce leaf miners. In fact, I'm not sure the best and easiest way to describe them. I will mention a fly and a moth as leaf miners. I mentioned complete metamorphosis earlier. The larvae or the caterpillar stage is the most destructive stage to the crops. Let me start with the fly. Let's imagine the cross-section area of a leaf. The mother fly will lay eggs in a wound which it creates while feeding on the leaf tissue. In about three days, the egg hatches into larvae which starts to actively make tunnels within the leaf tissue as they feed. They damage within the leaf. After like a week, the larvae come out and become the pupa on the plant or in the soil. After like five days, a fly will come out from the pupa. You must have seen these patterns on the leaves of tomatoes, watermelons, beans and the like. Looks like a map to wonderland. The larvae excretes its waste inside the tunnels, which decay and become food for bacteria and fungi. This adds up to your problems. Affected leaves will wilt and eventually die. Let me say that you may be lucky and spot the adult fly on the yellow stick traps if you have some. There is another type of a leaf miner that is from a moth, Tuta absoluta. My greetings to all the tomato and watermelon farmers in Moya, Isiolo, Narok, and Laitoktok. The female moth will lay its eggs on the fruit or the underside of the leaf. The adult, being a moth, is active at night and sleeps during the day. Its life cycle is about one month, within which she can lay over 200 eggs. The larvae then digs into the leaf or fruit. These caterpillars continue eating for about two weeks. This insect is just bad news to tomato and watermelon farmers. Damaged fruits are not marketable, resulting to losses. You may be lucky to notice the scars from outside, but the real mess is often deep within. You buy some tomatoes from the market in a rush, and the following day, you notice they are rotten before meeting the expected shelf life. Finally, I will mention two friends. God's creation is well balanced. Our crop pests are various natural enemies too. Do you know that some wasps can lay eggs inside the bodies of the crop pests? Yeah, they are called parasitoid wasps. Let's imagine an aphid on a leaf. When the wasp spots an aphid, it will puncture a hole into the aphid's body with its sharp needle-like organ called an ovipositor. The wasp injects an egg into the live aphid. After some few days, the eggs hatch and the larvae start eating their way out of the aphid's body. This process eventually leads to the death of the aphid. The young wasp will fly away to continue with similar activities. It's like a scene straight out of those nasty alien movies. I can guess where some movie directors get their inspiration. Finally, let me talk about predatory beetles. Some beetles are our friends too. An example is the ladybird. There are many types with different colors within Kenya. They search and eat soft-bodied insects like aphids on the plant. Quite brutal, but it works nevertheless. One of the many setbacks in chemical use in farming is that most chemicals we use kills both our enemies and friends. Do you know that you have companies in Kenya that sell these natural enemies? Consider them if you are doing strict organic farming. I hope you have learned something today, especially how wonderful God's creation is. If you like this kind of content, remember to like, share and subscribe. God bless you and see you in the next video.